This the express right here.
Well, it doesn't sound awesome. It's the original King Kong that, that made me want to direct movies. I saw that movie on TV when I was about eight or nine years old, and I wanted to become a filmmaker. Action. I like films that just take you away from your real life and sweep you up in adventure. Kong literally does that. All right, so as we head on in, just make sure you remain seated for your own safety. Hang on to your loose belongings. Hang on to your loved ones. And welcome back to Skull Island. As we head on in, for those of you who are planning on taking pictures or videos today, that's totally fine. Just make sure you hang on tight to those cameras. It's about to be a bit of a bumpy ride. And we do ask to keep that flash option off.
far enough in, I can go ahead and hop back on the microphone uh, again. It's an extended quiet zone, so they've got some production going on towards the tail end of the metro sets over on the other side there as well, so then that sound just carries up the, the hill that we're currently on. Uh, so Jurassic Park, right? That's, that's essentially where we're, where we are uh, in right now. We're showing you some, uh, some picture cars, some set dressing pieces, some props that we're using the first three Jurassic Park productions. In fact, oh, 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 it looks like some of the dinosaurs got out of their cages. Oh my goodness. Oh, I had no idea that was going to happen. Oh, man. Anyways, then you guys got spit on today. It's just dinosaur acid. It's going to wipe right off of your skin. So, <laughs> no reason. Well, uh, that would be weather, because typically here in sunny Southern California, typically we get sun almost every single day. But here on the Universal back lot, it's a whole nother story. In fact, that scene I was just showing you there uh, from Lost World Jurassic Park, it's actually filmed on top of a parking structure on our front lot. Uh, but there's rain, there's thunder, there's lightning, so we've added in all of these weather effects really emphasize this already very scary scenario of being attacked by an angry mama T-Rex. So again, weather plays a very important role in our productions, and since we're still on that topic of weather, we're actually going to go ahead and give you all a live weather demonstration today. We're going to make our way down the hill here into our old Mexico area. You may recognize this upcoming location from productions like Nacho Libre, Three Amigos, a Lady Gaga music video, Sir Jude, oh, Jude, oh, oh, music video, Criminal Minds, Beyond Borders filmed out here. They actually filmed two different episodes in the same location. They call it two different areas in each episode. Indiana Jones, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull filmed a few scenes out here. Shameless filmed part of an episode out here. Uh, even the movie Hop, they, uh, actually transformed this area into China for a quick scene. Oh, all right, sounds like they've activated some of the thunder. Looks like some lightning effects as well. Uh, the thunder effects, those are all strategically placed speakers along the set. Normally that would be added in in post-production, but for presentational purposes, we have them all on the set. Strobe lights are creating that lightning effect for us. Oh, and it looks like they've activated the rain. Great. Uh, the rain effects, those are sprinklers shooting the water straight up into the air, allowing the water to fall down naturally to the earth, just like rain would. friendly reminder for you, we still have that red e-cord that's located directly in the center of the tram. So if you do have a medical emergency, you drop something over the side, maybe it's an extreme bathroom emergency, you do have that as an option. Otherwise, we'll just remain seated and continue on here at the tour. Now, something else you may notice around us here today, a lot of door frames out there, and they are all different sizes. That is done on purpose because a few of our Western cowboys were a little on the shorter side. So what we would do is we would stand those shorter cowboys up in front of one of the smaller door frames. That way they would appear bigger, brawnier, stronger. And then maybe that female co-star, maybe she was a little taller. So maybe they cast someone like me. I'm almost six foot, not quite, almost there. Uh, what they do is they'd stand me up in front of one of those taller door frames. That way I'd appear a little more petite, a little more vulnerable, in need of saving, if you will. And it makes sense a lot of our cowboys be on the shorter side because back in the day, we were really looking for folks who knew how to ride horses. So we would end up recruiting horse jockeys. Typically, those gentlemen are going to be smaller in stature, so definitely makes sense. 
As you turn the corner here off to the left hand side, you're seeing our lovely Park Lake location, which may be recognized if you're one of my horror fans on board the tour. That area is also known as the Black Lagoon from Creature from the Black Lagoon. It was also the ocean in Mikhail's Navy, basically we used a bunch of miniatures, did some nice close-up shots. So at home, you believed you were filming on the ocean, when in reality, right out here on the Universal Backlot. Uh, for my Desperate Housewives fans, that area is also featured in an episode where they go to dump their friend's ashes and then Susan ends up falling over the side of the boat. Same location out there. Or maybe you watch the show Making It with Amy Poehler and Nick Offerman. They filmed a couple uh, uh, segments out there near that waterfront area as well. And as we continue on here, it looks like coming up next, we're going to take you over to our Little Europe area. So for those of you who are my fans of The Good Place, you're going to recognize this area as The Good Place, at least for those exterior shots. In fact, I know I played you all this clip a little earlier in the tour. I'm going to go and replay it up on your screens here just so you can see what this area looks like when it's fully dressed up for a production versus what we're about to see out here today. Now, maybe you never watched The Good Place. No worries. Maybe you're one of my Disney fans on board the tour and you recognize this area as Genovia from Princess Diaries 2, a royal engagement. It's where they held the princess parade for the royal wedding. Uh, this area is also featured, if you remember, in the late 90s. Disney did a revamped version of Cinderella starring Brandy, Whitney Houston, Whoopi Goldberg. They used our town center area for that production. And then Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean. They filmed a whole bunch of scenes out here as well. And then honestly what this area is really well known for, monster movies. When we think of Universal, we think of monsters. Dracula, Frankenstein, Wolfman, Bride of Frankenstein, The Mummy, Hunchback of Dr. Jane, The Invisible Man, Phantom of the Opera. Classic films are just brilliant. That Frankenstein image, Flathead, Balls. It's one of the great icons of the world. That to me was like the essence of the Universal horror film. I was just mesmerized by this movie. Boris Karloff, Lon Chaney. I remember the original Universal Studios Mummy movie really scaring me. They still ring in our memories now, and we love them. that we are the birthplace of the monster movie. That's why uh, we also are huge fans of the Halloween season and Halloween Horror Night. So we have officially announced a couple of the themes this year for a couple of those houses. Uh, last Halloween, it was officially announced that this year we're gonna have a Chucky house or a Chucky themed attraction. Uh, we also gonna have one based on The Last of Us, uh, the video game, which I know I'm super stoked about. And then uh, they also recently announced that Stranger Things is happening again this year, but it's gonna be very focused on Beth now. Uh, so more in line with the current season, most recent season. Season, I should say. Uh, and as we continue on here, coming up over on the left hand side, complete opposite from those scary uh, horror movies and scary themes. A uh, nice family friendly set out to the left here. That is from the uh, show Home and Family, which aired on the Hallmark Channel. It's a daily talk show that used to film out here in our lot. But they've since wrapped things up for that production, so now we have a couple new shows for using this set. Uh, one of the shows is Bel Air, the other one that's based on the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. For season one, it was an influencer's house. Uh, the show Never Have I Ever, they did some filming there for season three. And then if you like those like baking competition shows, the show Baking It for season one, they did a bunch of fun like winter wonderland scenes in the backyard area there. Season two of Baking It also filmed here on our lot. It just filmed a little further in our back lot area inside a couple sound stages there. But uh, super cute show. The judges are a bunch of adorable, hilarious grandmas. So it's a good time. It's on Peacock. Uh, now, at this point in the tour, for those of you who have taken the tour in the past, you might be thinking to yourselves, wait a second, Katie, what about Earthquake? Well, it's off to the right-hand side, but it's actually undergoing a really huge refurbishment right now, which really we need to go down. So welcome to our Denver Street location. Uh, I like to explore this area since I am from Colorado originally, but no, uh, Denver does not really look like this nowadays. You're seeing uh, some of our storage here on the back lot, as well as another one of our western areas out here on Denver Street. Uh, and with this location on Denver Street, fantastic place. Our brawl to take place, a lot of duels and fights have taken place out here over the years. We're just gonna start things up here. And that is because a lot of the materials we're seeing on our sets not exactly what they appear to be. So for example, on your screens here, where this guy's getting pushed up through a glass window there, it's not actual glass, it's actually candy glass, which is like a flimsy breakaway material where it's not actually gonna harm our actor, but it's gonna look really great on film. <laughs> We all went through a little earlier here in the tour. So 
So at this point, we're going to make it up to you all right now. We are about to take everyone on a nice little vacay. Welcome everyone to Amity Island. It's a small New England town, but don't worry. We have got that great white man eating shark jaws and hanging out literally over on the right hand side of the tram. In back to my friend George. He's a police diver. He's out in the water right now. He's just checking to make sure everything's all clear for us. Just in case we decide to hop out. Let me go for a nice uh oh, looks like there's something out in the water there with George. Um, hey George, George, you might want to swim back to your police boat, buddy. area that's actually featured in the very last episode of Superstore, uh, this big barbecue scene that took place out there. And this area has actually been closed off uh, pretty sporadically here over the last couple of months to the studio tours, and that's because that new TV series, Ted, again, the one about the super adorable but very naughty teddy bear, Ted, they've been doing a lot of active production out here. So if you plan on watching that show, definitely keep an eye out for this neighborhood. Another very popular use of this neighborhood is car commercials. We've got this nice turnaround point here. It tends to showcase those cars quite nicely in a very traditional looking neighborhood. And most of the homes you're seeing out here today, most of these homes, they're either facades, so again, just the fronts and sides, or they're shelves, meaning they're all four walls, but nothing inside. So for the most part, we're just using this neighborhood for those exterior shots. Uh, if we were to film inside of one of these homes, basically, we're having our actor go up to that front door, they're starting to open the door, they're waiting for the director to yell cut, and then everything else that's filmed inside, that's all gonna be built inside of a sound stage, and then we're gonna edit those two scenes together, so that way it looks like it's one continuous location. So I do apologize if I'm breaking some parts today. You can't actually live on Mysteria, but it's still really neat that we get the chance to explore this area on the studio tour. In fact, let me go ahead and show you all a couple more quick examples on your screens of other productions that have used this neighborhood over the years. The Burbs with Tom Hanks, Casper the Friendly Ghost, the whole opening sequence filmed out there, Nelly filmed a music video out there with Kelly Rowland, Smash Mouth, they filmed their all-star music video in that neighborhood, a lot of bright colors and animal prints for that one. Uh, animal House, they did a spin-off TV series in that neighborhood. So really has been used over and over again. And then as we continue to make our way up the hill here, we're driving up to our Wilderness Roads location today, you'll notice some nice greenery on either side of us here. 
Uh, she saw Bird Box on Netflix starring Sandra Bullock. This was the wooded area where she was with boy and girl and they're trying to get to their safe location. Uh, this same street was also a picture car. Uh, we've got a couple vehicles out there from our Fast and Furious productions as well. Both of the uh, burnt orange cars. The truck is from the fourth installment. That muscle car on the end is from the seventh. Now all these vehicles, they're all currently parked right alongside the motel we have out here in our lot. Some people say the owner of this motel is a little different. I say the owner of this motel is a little psycho. Welcome everyone to the Bates Motel and the Psycho House. Now for those of you who maybe watch the television series Bates Motel, if you're wondering, ooh, did that show film out here? The answer is nope. That show filmed on location in Canada. They just did a really great job of recreating what that Bates Motel looks like. And then as we continue to make our way up the hill here, we're going to get a chance today to uh, pass by the original Psycho House, built at a three-quarter length scale, giving us the illusion that it's on a much higher hill than it actually was. In fact, the original Psycho House consisted of only two walls. And then something happened in 1964, we started the studio tour. So then we added on two more walls, so it's all four walls, but nothing inside. Uh, so again, it says shell set at this point for the uh, for the Psycho House. And then, oh, I didn't realize Norman Bates would be home today. This is embarrassing. Um, hey, Norman. Hey, buddy. I didn't mean Psycho House, really. I meant, oh, no, you got a knife. Okay, definitely meant Psycho then. Um, okay, good luck, car three, car four. You got no chance. Welcome everyone to Steven Spielberg's crash site from War of the Worlds. And this is an actual Boeing 747 that was specifically destroyed for this set. The airplane crash site set is a perfect example of a set that is all designed around a vision that Steven had. When we first began to sit down to talk about the War of the Worlds, I thought, what if the 747 goes down right in a big neighborhood? Because it's, it's just something you don't see. You're doing good. You can keep messing me. Listen, come on, man. Listen, I want you to close your eyes, okay? Sit down close. Robbie, get in. Get in. Point of the tour, we've got about 10, maybe 15 minutes or so left until we're back at our unloaded area. So here is that final friendly reminder for you. We still have that red e-cord that's located directly in the center of the tram. So if you do have a medical emergency, you drop something over the side, you still have that as an option. Otherwise, we'll just remain seated, continue on here at the tour. Now, as we uh, turn the corner here, coming up, it'll be on our left-hand side. Uh, you can see big blue screen out there. Sometimes it's a green screen. It's part of our Falls Lake location. Uh, in fact, I can show you all a couple of quick examples on your screens of productions that have used that area here over the years. So originally, our Falls Lake area, it was a lake and a waterfall used to build up, hence the name Falls Lake. Uh, so you can see some footage on your screens there from Psycho. But then with that big blue backdrop, that was designed for this production, Jaws the Revenge. So I know I mentioned a little earlier here in the tour, we had a lot of issues with that first Jaws movie. So a couple Jaws movies later, we decided, let's create a nice controlled location for some of our extra shots. Done. That is how Falls Lake was born. Lucky for you, our whole family of protection. 
Are you kidding me, Roman? You didn't shut off your phone, bro? I gotta call you back. I'm just, I'm in the middle of the night. See what I'm talking about? Call you back. Oh, man. It was on vibrate. Sean tricked us. I just can't hold him forever. Daddy, Roman, we're up. <sighs> Drive him, move that vehicle. It's about to get real interesting. Moments later. Hey, I'm gonna need to see you tour archway all the way down to the era so that you don't get your mind confused together. You know where you're going.